Chapter 962, The Daimyo and His Retainers. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast. I'm the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. You know, it doesn't matter how many podcasts I do uh, mm. uh, uh, through the years, I never remember to think of something to say when somebody says, and here's Give and Take. <laughs> There's nothing to say. We, you, you said quite enough with your very <laughs> presence, I think. <laughs> uh, we got uh, chapter 962, The Daimyo and His Retainers of a popular manga One Piece. But first, a cover page. Cover page. So this is not Lola, as I thought was last time. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. it's her, but she's changed. Oh, boy. No, no, you silly man. It's it's Queen from the Smile Factor on Dress Rosa. This is the girl who made out with Frankie, or, or rather Frankie made out with in dramatic manly fashion and was swooning for him and um, and Senor Pink oh. during their little battle in that, in that situation. I completely Remember forgot that? that she was a character. Indeed, as did I. But uh, she appears to have survived. Congratulations, Queen, beloved so, character of One so Piece. So she was like, um, <laughs> like a bad guy, but like swooning for Frankie because, like, he, she was a well, dress, okay. she was a, a Doflamingo mm-hmm. person. She was a smile factory manager uh, in the factory where they made smile, and yes, working under Doflamingo in Dress Rosa. Okay, so I guess she's redeemed in some way. I mean, it doesn't necessarily confirm that. I mean, she's currently engaging in sexual harassment, I, I suppose. Assault and battery, perhaps. Um, but she's really sucking on that guy's face, and this it's that's pretty graphic, frankly. Um, so it, redeemed might be the wrong <laughs> word, in my opinion. But uh, no, uh, no, a vigilante this, this, is, of love? this is all I need to see. She's redeemed. <laughs> Fair enough. Where's my big, beautiful woman to do this to me? Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, and that's uh, this is volume 12. Oh, okay, so I guess this may deconfirm that Lola's here. Maybe Lola is elsewhere in Dress Rosa. I mean, I'm I, sure I that's what this is uh, saying. Like, it'd be weird to have this character be here and then for Lola to also be here. Well, I'm just they could just keep exploring Dress Rosa. It's a you know, it's a pretty big place. They could look um, around and find actually, it elsewhere. Actually, yeah, it is more likely they'd explore Dr- that we'll see like other Dress Rosa people like what happened? What's how is yes. it how is it working now? Mm-hmm. Where where's the the announcer for the 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 <laughs> Colosseum? Where is Oh um, yeah, that guy. That guy. Where's uh, He's all the right. fu- all the uh, the lower level mm. thugs who weren't pirates that uh, were in the Colosseum? Uh, how are the toys doing? Uh, they're not, oh, yeah. They don't exist anymore, so are they around? Beloved character, uh, I can't I can't think of any <laughs> other characters. I mean, I, the, the, I'm kind of curious what happened to the Doflamingo pirates. Are I guess, they yeah, in I mean, jail? This might, this I might be about that. Like, the Doflamingo yeah, pirates, yeah. like some of them, they just It would be very, good. I was going to say, it'd be very SBS core for, like, this little mini cover arc to be where, like, all of the crew is like, yeah, well, we didn't like Doflamingo that much anyway. Fuck him. And now we're going to be good boys and we'll, you know, be nice and cool. It does seem a bit cool. strange if that would be the case. Like, for this person, I don't think she has a direct connection to Doflamingo. She was just a manager. Um, yeah, she, for her, it's it's less of a like direct. She may but have the, been, like, the officers recruited, were like, his, but yeah, his they, officers, like, grew up with him. So that, that'd be a little weird if that they, happened. They should definitely all not be here. That would be very strange. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, well, anyway, we'll, we'll learn more next chapter. Um, so let's get to the daimyo and his retainers. Here we go, page one. So we are continuing at rapid pace at the mm-hmm. after the end of last chapter where Lord Odin had been uh, dethroned, uh, disowned. Right, right. And they sent him, or he just went over to Hakumai for fun, just mm-hmm. to hang out. And uh, we're sp- skipping <laughs> right to as soon as he's about to leave. So we don't see what he did there, but, you know, it's assumed that he had a good time and the people like him, even though he's a rambunctious, rowdy rebel, uh, they're saying he's going to be it's going to be lonely without him. He's a loud uh, life of the party sort of person. <laughs> Indeed, he is a, a real Chad, a real Chad the whole time. Um, and uh, they're talking about he says that he's going to go check out Curry. Because Kuri sounds like a fun place. It's got a monster named Ashura Doji, who's a powerful man. I'm going to go see what's going on over there. So here we go, setting up his uh, his arrival there. Yes. 
And, uh, and of course, they're restating that it's for criminals and it's a lawless area, basically not even part of Wano. So there you go, perfect place for Odin to go do stuff. Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of stuff the ground gets covered in this chapter, but mostly it's because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's stuff we already knew would happen. Like he, yeah, uh, well we'll get to it. But before mm-hmm. we leave, we see the the room he trashed, which is a uh, very rock and roll <laughs> with a table through the ceiling. Indeed, <laughs> through the ceiling. Uh, impressive, impressive. I'm wondering how that happened. And old Yasui is like, oh, let's just pretend it was a natural disaster. Just being a real softy. Because he knows, he knows that Odin's a, he's a, he's a, a top lad, as they say. Yeah. Then also the money was stolen. And an Orochi, the little snitch, the little bitch, the little, little scritch, uh, <laughs> saying, oh, Lord Odin, he did it. <laughs> I saw what happened. Rose I don't hands. know about you. I find this fully trustworthy, the words that he's saying right now. I, th- I think it's, it, I mean, nothing more to see here. Case closed. Yes. It, Odin did it. <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, and, uh, of course, you've got the thing of, like, some of the miscellaneous nameless retainers are like, ah, of course, we are assuming bad thing about Odin in keeping with what uh, Orochi is saying. And wise Yasuye, as we know, is like, hmm, I think if Odin had done it, he would have been more bombastic about it, so I'm a little suspicious. Are you sure, Orochi? Orochi rubs hands even more furiously. It's like, yeah, yep, I swear, I was just too scared to do anything. But Yasuye uh, is a little skeptical of this claim. Yeah, so as we were theorizing the potential like uh, what is orochi it looks like he's just a like like a motherfucker right now already <laughs> he's already scheming against odin even in these like smallest of ways just stealing some money blaming he's it a, on odin presumably yeah, presumably he's a coward and a scallywag and a and a little little bitch boy is what he is if anything this is just making me think more and more this would be like the perfect opponent for Momonosuke. I want Momonosuke to kill him in his Orochi form in some cool capacity. That feels like an appro- the like dragon. this guy's a piece of shit. I- exactly, exactly. And maybe there's like some lore reason like in Japanese history about like I know there's stories about boys slaying dragons or I don't know, Okami miscellaneous whatever. Um yeah, okay. Anyway, anyway. So we're cutting back to Odin on the road again. Here we go. On the road again. What's that song? It's <laughs> On the, the road so again. No, no, it's, uh, it's Willie Nelson. No, no, no. There's a, there's a. I'm thinking of Shrek, like that scene in Shrek where the mm. we're on the road again, and something, 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 something there. Uh huh. Uh-huh, I have uh-huh, uh-huh. some memory of this. <laughs> Go Not watch, a complete one. Everybody go watch Shrek right now. Turn this. Welcome to the Shrek cast, everybody. The Here Shrek, we are. The the, the, the Shrek. Shrek Cast. K dot asked. Uh, I am Donkey, and this is Shrick. Welcome. Uh, Okay, here we go. There they go, walking. What do you know? Odin's got two followers. It's fucking Kinemon and Kanjuro, his first two boys. Uh, Denjiro. Denjiro. Denjiro, you're right. My mistake. And here they go. These two fuckboys are following him around. Odin is disgusted. He finds this true beta bullshit, but uh, such is such is life. Alpha's attract what a face. Beta. That that's an emote <laughs> face. That is a good face. Oh, oh that oh that's great. Like ooh, bro. Ooh, you just posted cringe and your subscriber uh, yeah. count. Let's just say it's uh, it's not looking good. That's you we, know, we should add that sad. as an emote in the pod Discord. <laughs> you know they're just going to spam every episode we post <laughs> with that fucking emote if we do. You posted uh, a pod cast ooh, ooh, in 2019. Mm. <laughs> that's a no no. Um, okay, well, we'll take it under consideration, folks. Uh, okay, well, there miscellaneous shots of he's standing at a temple. The two guys are standing outside to watch over him. How very nice. Uh, and Odin here is inside, and he's uh, he's decided to record a logbook of his activities. So the next, we see these little page things, and uh, the, the narration is then done in the form of Odin's log uh, journal that he's keeping. So how, how nice. How nice. Yeah, so- he's doing it like a sailor, which clearly he has an affinity for. Yes, so first off, uh, Kikunojo, as we know, mm-hmm. is Kiku, and mm-hmm. his older brother, Izo, which we I mm-hmm. don't think we've heard of. Um, oh, we've heard of him. We've heard of him. Do you know who that is? Because uh, that character is, is known. Um, oh, I'm dumb. I don't know. I will paste it for you. Oh, oh I'm feeling so smug and such a genius. That is, of course... Izo, the, uh, one of the division commanders from the Whitebeard Pirates. Oh, who, uh, 
So yeah, we you were mm-hmm. saying, oh, someone was saying a while ago mm-hmm. that like Kiku looked no. They, they were both kind of like cross dressers or um, or like gender. Yeah, there was something going some, on. You know what I'm talking about. There was some discussion about maybe that person is that person, but uh, it turns out the brother. Well, how mm-hmm. how about that? Yep, so they're brothers. That's cool. And, of course, I mean, now that we know that Izo eventually ends up a division commander in the Whitebeard Pirates, like, of course, we've already learned that Odin will join the Whitebeard Pirates at some point. So seeing seeing some connections uh, yep. man, makes sense. Makes sense. I wonder if this uh, means oh, I, there was actually ten red scabbards. Mm-hmm. Um, what, it was, it was, I don't know. Because Izo was not I, counted in, in that. My my guess is going to be that the red scabbards were like formed or something after Izo like uh, oh I, my my narr- I think that uh, uh, Odin and his boys some amount of them are going to go do white beard things then you know some will break off and join the the Gold Roger Pirates Odin definitely will um, and then like after that they'll come back home and then he'll like form the red scabbards at that point and Izo wouldn't have been there for that so that's yeah. my I don't know that would make sense that's the timeline. Also, very kawaii of, of both the, the, the boys to be dressing mm-hmm. as females and, and, and being, like, <laughs> e- extra cute. Doing, like, doing, like, they're filthy and, ca- like, homeless scamps, but mm-hmm. they're dressing in kimonos and dancing for money. A uh, very it low is, point. I, it's cute. I think it's cute. I, I'm enjoying this. My, my masculinity uh, is, is on the rocks. It's quaking in its boots right now. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, I, I, I like them. I think they're funny. Um, and uh, I don't know, seeing Izo, like this this little backstory about these two, about how they're uh, like Izo, whatever's like the first son of the, the head of like a dancing school or something. And uh, something happened to their father. Their father, their family was torn apart after their father was arrested and convicted. But of what? I do not, maybe of being gay. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe they don't like that <laughs> back in the day. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they didn't like dancing or something. Like, Ooh, no, it was like, this that. is like the Footloose prequel in Japan. Little known original, no yeah, dancing I mean, on my turf. They, they danced on the streets to get by, but the locals treated them scornfully. Hmm, could it be because of the dancing? Could it be because of the music? They hate all that <laughs> stuff in Japan. <laughs> Maybe. And, uh, the, and the, but, big, the big moral of Wano is, mm-hmm. uh, art's pretty good, guys. Dancing, pretty, not bad, you know, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Uh, but clearly, uh, you know, Odin meets them, thinks they're funny, cool, excellent lads, and so they all share a big Odin pot together, and they join up, and they're part of the crew now. Yeah. How nice. How nice. So they're then, like the second round of recruits, basically, after our first two boys. Then in Kibi, I always forget Kibi and Kuri, where they are on the map. I fucking forget. <laughs> I don't know. But in Kibi, there was a demon that would steal human hair, mm-hmm. um, and he just would go around, and it was Kanjiro. He turned. He turned the hair into. My in, hair. Turned the hair into brushes so he could sell them, which is I a very strange way to that. make money. If he's going around stealing things from people, why didn't you steal the money instead of the hair? Um. Well, because he's like an. Uh, I think that he's not like a, a full villain. He's like it's kind of like a wacky situation. He's like stealing hair that, that you don't need your hair to make brushes that he's gonna sell. Or okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, goofy enough for me to not morally question it. Uh, yeah, I think, he, like, w- in this came scene, for, for Odin's mm-hmm. hair, so it's like, ooh, big mistake. It, it, he says here, I yield, I thought you were a corpse. I mean, I don't know how you'd mistake someone for a corpse, so he might be lying because he might just be a scumbag, or maybe he's, like, blind and can't tell the difference <laughs> between a living and dead person, and it's all been a misunderstanding or something. He thought they were all dead. As he, you know, wrestles them you to know, the ground and pulls their hair off. You know, here's a th- here's a here's a game theory. Mm-hmm, please. Kanjiro <laughs> has terrible eyesight, but they haven't invented glasses yet, so they don't know. Oh, that's and why the his reason, paintings are so bad. That's why his paintings are so bad. He, he draws <laughs> from life, and that's what they look like to him. That's he draws from life. You'd think he might have chosen a different profession, uh, but no, he was inspired but, to be a yeah, painter. So no, but like, what, if you if you if you have no idea that your eyesight is worse than other people's. It's just sort of like, yeah, it's, it doesn't ever come Ooh. up. Okay, I, are you ready? Before, Here's before a... I had um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. glasses, I would right. draw things from the way I saw them. And it only, huh. uh, like, people thought I was just, like, drawing badly or drawing, like, impression, <laughs> impressionist sort of things. Mm-hmm. But only l- afterwards did I realize I just couldn't fucking see things from a distance. 
Well, that's interesting. Uh, and and here's a, are you ready for like a life power up? If we want an epic Conjuro fight later in the series, he can just get glasses, and then like he'll, his drawings will suddenly get good, and his power level will like quadruple instantaneously as they're actually you know uh, uh, sick. But then they'll break his glasses, and he'll be powerless again at the end. So it'll be I, a temporary buff. I don't know, but I feel like we've seen mm-hmm. Conjuro wearing glasses. <laughs> you know, I can't think of any. Maybe. Maybe that'd be like, interesting. Like in in one o this arc, like he's been looking at a paper. Or, I I don't know. Oh, maybe you, I'm you, just so imagining you, it. If anyone can confirm that, let us know. We should maybe we can go back and check that. But that uh, is a hilarious idea, um, and maybe as context now at this part. Uh, but he still likes the style. I mean, it's very strange. Like this whole idea of he steals hair from hum- from humans, uh, whether they're dead or alive. Yeah, um, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I thought you were a corpse. Like, how could you? What? What are you talking well, that about?" That could he could just be lying. That could just be a lie. I don't think Kanjiro's a liar. He's very clearly an idiot. Uh, he's definitely an idiot. Um, I, yeah, I lean more towards idiocy, and I'm just the joke's a little bit odd if that's the case. But it, uh, it, it might be I like a know. Japanese like folklore thing of somebody. Who you know, I hair. do sense the presence of like some Japanesey bullshit going on in this situation. Maybe there's like a an ancient oni of Japan that like stole people's hair. Uh, that's the sort of shit. This could be referencing or something. So, uh, I don't know. Genius scholars of Japanese history, let me know in the comments section, why don't you? Um, okay, anyway, so yeah. so that's enough of that. Now in Udon, here we go. There's a mountain bandit who's maybe stealing women if he sees them. Uh, but no, it's just Raizo, the ninja who isn't kidnapping any women, so I don't know where that got started, but who's just heartbroken because he was rejected by a kunoichi, and so he quit the Oniwa Banshu. So that's where he got his so, ninja training. All right, so mm. is that um, the lady we know, the ninja lady, I forget her name. Shinobu is, I Shinobu. believe, her name. We do not yet know. I don't because think they it's haven't, confirmed. They haven't been mm. on screen together or in the same place I'm going to guess that that is the case, but that's a total guess. We, you know, it could just be another few. There are other women in the uh, uh, Oniwa Banshu or whatever, so, like, it could uh, be I one guess, of them. I guess, but it, it does set it's up probably for, like, Shinobu. a pretty good joke where, you know, like, when she was younger, she was a lot more attractive, and then he Indeed. sees her again and be like, oh. You're as beautiful as you ever were, uh, you know, Shinobu, some shit like that. Although I feel like they've had a chance to meet up already, because they've been on Wano together for uh, yeah, a decent amount of time. They probably have been in the same place, I just can't remember. I, you know, but yeah, I don't think we've seen them together, though, so that I definitely think that could be setting something up. Plus, they both like have the same build. Weird, giant people with overly wide frames that is odd, but sick. Big heads. So, we'll see. Big yeah. heads. Big head boys. Rise is a good lad. <laughs> And so, now, Kuri, here we go. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the reason Bryzo joins them is because he's just Mm-mm. sick of living as a hermit. Oh, yeah. I, I want to guess... fuck Odin. I want to fuck. I'm sick of being this incel. Um, so I think that's his logic, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Can't can't object. Mm-hmm. Then, in the lawless land of Kuri, where the unstoppable monster squeezes a snake for blood that's from the snake. That's pretty fucked up. That's pretty good. That's that's <laughs> that's gonna go straight into my tomato sauce. <laughs> Indeed. Those uh, those, there it those is. Japanese famous for their Italian food. <laughs> uh, now I I was kind of wondering like I know I, I've heard of various like snake poison sake or something that's like or not sake but like poison alcohol that you could brew or I don't know about the blood. I, I'm wondering if this if that's like pure blood that he's drinking or if he's like seasoning you know. Wine, like sake or something else. I think else he's just a blood? bit of a fucking freak, and he's squeezing he is a, a freak. snake to get the blood <laughs> out because he looks cool. It does look cool, and he—it's like, just that this is a very like severe moment in this man's life. But I guess it speaks to what they do in Curry for some reason. So yeah. there he is, Ashura Doji, uh, the big man himself. So here he is. He hates the rich. He wants to kill Odin because he hears he's he's on the move, and he would love the opportunity to kill him because he's privileged and fuck those boys. Understandable. Understand. Yeah. I wonder how old uh, Ashura Doji is. Um, he he hmm. looks like you know he doesn't look like a teenager here, and he doesn't get <laughs> z- zapped forward in time like the others. He yeah so he ate, like he looks exactly the same in this panel as he looks currently in Wano. He could be let's if he was twenty five, which he theoretically could be here, and then he's like fifty five in current One Piece. 
considering the fact that One Piece characters live longer than normal humans, which is canon, which is true, I wouldn't be too surprised by yeah. uh, by something like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there you go. There that's all of the, the people. And mm-hmm. uh, the gang is, you know, sitting around without Odin, just having mm-hmm. their food all assembled. And uh, then it's like, hang on, wait a minute. Oh, Lord Odin went, you know, he he often disappears for a day or two on a whim. So they're getting used to his antics, the, the way mm-hmm. he's just sort of spontaneous. Um, but he went south to Kuri, which is where they were going, which is the lawless land. And they're like, oh shit, mm-hmm. he's been there for, you know, two days or something. Mm-hmm. So they rush off mm-hmm. in that direction. And then we see Odin, as he was, uh, come in smashing through the gate. And uh, faced with uh, a horde of, of cutthroats and vagabonds. <laughs> and they don't like him. They don't like him one bit. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And uh, so he just basically is like, all right, bring out Ashra Doji. Uh, a, a, a samurai has come. Let's fight. And I mean, pretty simply, we kind of just, we just cut. Oh, oh and, and not to forget, there's like a rule here in Kuri that's like anyone could enter. But like, you won't, you can never leave because we'll kill you or something. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess they'll stop you. They've. They'll I, steal wh- why you. Why can't and... you leave? I'm I'm a little confused. Why Why can't you leave? Do they just um, like they'll fuck kill you? you? We won't let you. <laughs> but why? I think, I think it's just sort of like if you dare <laughs> approach the lion's den, you're not going to yes. come out alive, sort of thing. Okay, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the fight, a, fight, fight. There they go. They, he goes in a big old smash, big old slice, and then his his uh, followers find him. Oh. Hey, real quick, real quick. On the page before that, if you look, look at the bottom panel in the middle. Do you see that one of uh, of Izo uh, carrying? Uh, oh, I did. Uh, little Kiku. Kiku on his back with like holding a little gun in her in his hand, her hand, his whatever uh, hand. That's um, adorable. That's adorable. Isn't he like cradling another samurai sword? Like Doesn't he's holding it. Maybe that is a sword. Okay, I thought like it was a gun. He's holding it. <laughs> is like that's the hilt, and he's holding the whole thing across his body. Uh, okay, you know what? Could be true. It'd be really funny. Imagine if you had a baby strapped to your back, and you're like, watch my back. So you gave it a gun. That <laughs> would be hilarious, but, uh, okay, probably not Probably not the case here. A sword is also good. But it anyway. It's like so. Marika double dash, but you're dashing <laughs> with your feet. Exactly, exactly. So the, the, the boys show up, and uh, there you go. Bing, bong, bing. Uh, fucking Odin has killed everyone and killed Ashra Doji. But it <laughs> took him dead. all night. He's dead. He's deceased. Oopsie daisy. But uh, Odin, actually, for the first time, he's got a couple arrows in him. He's fucking bleeding. He looks like this hurt. And it said it took him all night, and he can't believe it took him all night. So this was an actual fight. This actually required effort and, uh, and was not so easy. Yeah, that, and you know what? Easy, easy I, like, I like that this shows Ashura Doji to be very powerful because it we've, does. Never, we've never had, like, a, like a, within the, the Red Scabbards, a power ranking thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but if Ashura Doji was, like, strong enough to fight off Lord Odin for this long, yeah. this long ago, it's just sort of like, huh, you know? You know what is, this does? This, yeah, he, in retrospect, makes Jack seem like less of a jobber. Uh, yeah, we I was consider... about to say. Like right, that, that, okay. that big epic moment where Jack fe- lost all of his fan base, all of his Twitter followers. <laughs> when he was cancelled uh, by Shiro Doji, sliced him in half. Indeed. If we had just, like, known any of this backstory, everybody thought Jack was a, do- thought Jack was a jobber at that point. But, uh, I mean, nah, this, this guy's pretty fucking tough. So, uh... That's interesting to look back on. I, I feel like he was intentionally designed to look weak at that. Like, he was a big, fat job of the hut motherfucker on top of an ox at that point. And yeah. uh, that was, like, the first thing he ever did was, was slash Jack. So He sort of reminds enough. me of Yajirobe, or however you say yeah. it from Dragon Ball. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, in Dragon mm-hmm. Ball specifically. In Dragon Ball Z, he basically does nothing. But in Dragon Ball, yeah. Yeah. when he first meets Goku, mm-hmm. he's, like, so fat and tough that goku mm-hmm. actually has a trouble dealing damage to him and he's actually like a f- like a match hmm. and Indeed. it's, I it's an that. interesting yeah interesting sort of like this this loser is like toe-to-toe with fucking goku what the hell's going on that was when the uh, they were getting like the mystic water or something right something around there uh i forget exactly uh, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter in any but case it's like, yeah oh yeah, yeah go on yeah no no, 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 no. 
Well, okay, in any case, news has gotten out that Odin is fucking up Kuri, beat Ashra Doji, beat up all the fucking uh, miscreants, and is forcing them to do what the fuck he wants him to do. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the very end where, he, where Odin just declares, I've decided I want to become king of these scumbags. I'm going to be king of the scumbags. Well, hang on, before that, oh yeah, he says that. After, um, after Ashura Doji says, kill me, and he's like, no, I won't kill you. I'm going to be king of all you guys because I'm a miscreant does. too. Yep, and that's that's what happens. He and everybody's real surprised. Everyone on his side, everyone loves him. Well, there's a, there's that one panel of uh, the fox from uh, Ku Ringo, right? And yeah. uh, and like his master is alive. I wonder if that guy. I think this is the first time we've seen him in this much clarity. I wonder if that's we'll see more of him. I'm I'm interested. But uh, in any case, yes, word yeah. gets around. All the people see. And he's uh, fucking, Odin is so cool, such a cool guy, that the Shogun, okay, one chapter later, you ready for this? He already reverses his decision to disown Odin, undisowns him, he owns him, and not in the bad way, but in the totally sick, awesome, bro, son way, and declares Odin daimyo of curry. So that's how it happened, folks, and everyone's real excited about it. Um, How nice. Yeah. What, uh, I could see the beginnings of, I forget her name, Kinemon's future wife. Uh, Tsuru. 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 Oh, Tsuru uh, with her, like, in between <laughs> One Piece girl face and the, the chin face. Yeah, that we know. it's getting there. <laughs> the lengthening has begun. And uh, on the page where we see this crowd running around, I think in the background that is, I don't know, what it, I think it's called, like, Odin Castle or whatever. I recognize those, like, square formations of the mountain so i think that's uh yeah. that's where the castle has been built so uh everyone's real excited in curry they're all real happy and this makes curry like a legitimate like i don't know like state or whatever of uh of wano it's no, it's no longer, longer you know a rich and mm-hmm. hive of scum and villainy it and i love a... this winning pose at the bottom of congratulations yeah. odin daimyo he says gesturing at him who's got two thumbs and is daimyo this guy uh Cur- sick <laughs> kiku is so fucking small there He's like Get a, bigger he's like, already, Kiku. You're pissing me off. You're too short. I'm mad. That's a, gonna be a big bitch. Like a tiny little munchkin. Oh yeah, she, <laughs> he, he does. He does grow big. Wait, mm-hmm. I forget. Does does he or she like to be referred to as he or she? First, like first I, of all, I don't think this person would be overly offended because in One Piece no, no, these no, things no. are more ambiguous. I mean, but, not uh, about the offense thing, but like I forget if she called herself that or whether he, uh, whatever. I can't remember. I'm, I think it's she, but uh, I, I, everyone called her she like up till like it, recently. Like it seems is reasonable. easier to think of her as a she. It is. It is. <laughs> she's she's like more masculine at this point of her life though. So it's uh, you yeah. know, it's one of, it's one of those ones. One of those ones. But there's so, Ashura having a big sad. What's what's wrong, Ashra? What's what's got you down, big guy? <laughs> Tell me oh, all about it. Oh, I I never know before you, Lord Odin, what peace is. And thank <laughs> you, Lord Odin. Kicks in face. Shut up. That's gay, bro. <laughs> Heard enough of that. <laughs> yeah, and and now now that he is daimyo, Lord Odin needs some retainers, but he doesn't mm-hmm. want some stuffy official people. So he's like saying to this this group of ragtag ruffians, <laughs> uh, "You guys be my my samurai," and they're all crying like, "Oh my god!" Ah, uh, it's adorable. I love them all. Even so, Izo Izo, who's on the white pirates, was uh, was a retainer of Odin. So, what do you know? Yeah. How interesting. Everyone's real excited about it. And, and then, uh, Bamboo Bop, six years, thirty three years from now. So, bam, another big old time skip just happened. There you go. And uh, the, this, the, Six the years rocks. later, the, yeah, mm-hmm. the Rocks mm-hmm. Pirates, the survivors of the Rocks Pirates started recruiting. So they had broken up, and I assume, I assume when they say like six years later, that is the year that happened. Uh, presumably, in, like, presumably, whenever they broke up was, you know, thirty-three years from the present, and then I they mean, started they're, they're... recruiting. Yeah, I, 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 he's probably just clarifying this to be like, uh, I don't know. Well, okay, well, let, let's finish the page and we'll, we'll discuss that. So um, they've broken up. Uh, I want to discuss that ramification to that panel more. But, uh, oh, on the beach of Wano, what's this? We've got two two animals, or are they people washed up? What could this be? And it's... we've got a friendly Tengu man who's poking him. Don't know that guy. Oh. I see a, a cat and a dog. What? Oh. Who could these be? Yeah, maybe an Eno and a Neku or something. <laughs> So clearly it's uh, Inugarashi and Nekumamushi have washed up, and we see there's a ship here. So we still don't know 
how they got here, like what their story was up to this point. Um, I don't think there's any indication that yet they've been connected with Whitebeard or Gold Roger or any of that. So we will have to learn. Uh, I, what, uh, what I think here. there there is a hundred percent chance that they are already connected to at least someone, some pirate, uh, mostly most likely Roger. You think so? Um, simply because of this uh, earlier panel, legendary mm-hmm. rocks, pirates started recruiting. This is the link to the outside world, the link to Gold Roger. I think these two mm-hmm. are going to be Odin's link to Gold Roger and the Whitebeard Pirates and all of oh. that business. That would uh, definitely make sense. Because, uh, I mean, if not, something else would have to be. So it might as well be these guys. That would yeah. that would make sense. I mean, they, they have a, a connection to, to Roger. And uh, I don't know exactly know if we've heard any like backstory well, here's- of them. My only guess to the contrary as to why that might not be the case is because, like, s- steadily, like, the, the thing about the, um, the, what are they called, Anzo, the fucking animal, the minks. Minks. The, the mink tribe's thing is that, like, they're a retainer, like, tribe to the Kozuki clan, like, presumably due to Odin, I think? Okay, I, I don't think that was, like, a historical thing going back generations. They're, like, loyal to the Kozuki. I think that Nekomamushi and uh, Inugarashi, like, met Odin and then became his retainers. And then, by extension, because they're the rulers of the Minx, uh, that made the whole tribe, like, loyal to the Kozuki clan, uh, hmm. I think. Yeah. I, I, I think that's how it is. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and so, like, it, it'd be a little bit strange for me to think. It, it's it's possible. But, like, imagine if they're already, like, Gold Roger's crew or something. Then they, like, meet Odin now, and they decide, oh, forget Roger. We're going to be, like, super-duper loyal to Odin because he's better than Gold Roger? He's I, cooler? I don't think they're not... Well, I guess it does make more sense that they'd be, like, loyal to Odin first and then... Gold Roger second because Odin was on Roger's ship. They definitely prioritize Odin, like in their lives. That's yeah. That okay. seems clear to me. Let, but I mean, let me, I could let be me wrong. rescind my one hundred percent guarantee. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> now it's only a ninety percent guarantee. Uh, by the way, about the panel that we see up there. So, um, regarding like the rocks breaking up. Okay, so I yes. recognize in in this panel, of course. So so obviously this is being set up. So you know, Whitebeard and Big Mom have gone their separate way. We see them up front. So okay, obviously in the in the middle there's Kaido. On the left, excuse me, presumably that's a Kinshiki, Golden Lion from the Strong World movie, who we know was on this crew as well. And but the person on the right, the person on the right, I do not know who that is. It's very uh, likely not Zebek because his fate is left mysterious, and that doesn't look like him at all. Um, uh, so I think maybe it's uh, Pedro. It could be like there were a couple named people. Like that could be Captain John. Who or the Silver Axe or that one Queen of the Pirates lady, whoever that was, like like Chinese Man, sounding lady. I would I would I really know. like a, a One Piece to have a Long John Silver. That's what the Silver Axe is about, or Captain John combined. <laughs> yeah, that ooh, you know that's true. They those two boys should team up. They should do the fusion dance. They got the and, white beard, uh, the black beard. Where's mm-hmm. the Long John Silver? That's what we, we have. A Davy Jones locker already. That was uh, you know, uh, Hody Jones and. Uh, Davy back fight and uh, Vander Decken, I think, was part of that in some way. The Flying Dutchman was his ship, so that's part of the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. So we, obviously, we want as many tropes and known pirate figures as possible. But uh, I'm just, I'm just saying, Oda wouldn't have put a fifth figure there. That's kind of mysterious and hard to tell. Uh, without, without cause. Any, any guesses on who that might be? Like, am I forgetting anything? Uh, I... Is, is that supposed to be Gold Roger? I don't, I don't think so. Like, this looks like a picture of the rocks breaking up specifically. Um, No, no, no. Roger wasn't part of that crew, so... Right, right. So why would he be be in the shot? Um, They're all going their separate ways. Three of them, Yonko, one of them, Shiki. I'm Googling the rocks pirates real quick to see if I... uh, If I'm missing anything. Let me see here. Uh, Zebek, Edward Newgate, Charlotte Linlin, Kaido, Kinshiki, John, Silver Axe, and Ochoku. So, it's, yeah, yeah, the ones I said, so Captain John, Silver Axe, and Ochoku are the only ones it even could be, unless it's supposed to be Zebek himself, but that seems like guaranteed not the case, no. I, would, uh, I would guess. I think um, because it's so vague and out of, out of, the, out of the way, like, mm-hmm. you can't really tell what it is, it's, it's just sort of like, yeah. 
one of them. Like, I'm sure he has designs for these other characters already, so... I'll, I'll just say that uh, one other point of information to, to consider on this, it's that in the previous shot, remember that one shot of, like, the, the Rocks Pirates, like, up in, in a row, uh, like, kind of in shadow? Uh, we could yeah. see... We, there were white, I'm looking at it right now on the wiki. Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido are really obvious. Zebek is also the you know little manlet. He's obvious too. Kinchiki, you can see off on the side. Like, but nobody else stands out. So like the fact that there's a fifth figure here is definitely intentional and probably setting something up. Is my guess. I don't think he would do that without cause. Might be something very small, but uh, I suspect yeah, well, it's something. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. They would eventually become the beacons of power for the next generation. We know mm -hmm. four of them made major strides. Yes. Three of them stayed for a very long time mm -hmm. as emperors. Mm -hmm. One, I've never heard, like, Captain John, Silver Axe, neither of them have, like, been on my radar in any way. So, like, yeah, just in small would, ways. Would yeah. they have, like, started to become important and then been destroyed by someone? Or, <sighs> or are they, like, as of yet, like, like gone into hiding like did the, did mm. this person become mm. a beacon of power for the next generation or did he you know go into obscurity could I he mean, it's one of these things like if you were to ask your average like human being in the one piece world like hey do you know about like they'd be like whitebeard like yeah i know whitebeard big mom yeah i know white oh yeah obviously i know the yonko you'd be like do you know who captain john is do you know who ochoko is do you know who the silver axe is they your average person would like probably know those names based on like how it's been presented like, in-universe, even though, like, we as the reader, like, obviously, Oda, you know, he doesn't reveal all information to us at once. Some things he comes up with later. I feel like those probably fit into that category, which is fine. Not not, not a charisma. That's just how stories are made. Um, and so, I, I mean, if I had to guess, I think that that fifth figure is someone we will meet is, like, a thing he's setting up to, maybe it'll be, like, a movie. Maybe it'll be, like, a spinoff thing. I mean, sometimes he does that, like, with Kinshiki's whole existence was kind of as a spinoff character uh, for, for Strong World. Um, but, I, but, I mean, this is, a, this is a notable group of pirates, obviously, for sure. Uh, maybe it's from one of the movies that, like, you and I, like, haven't watched because we don't really care about the movies that much. Uh, uh, I don't I, know. I mean, if it, if it was from the movies, they wouldn't have in that movie explained that he's part of the Rocks Pirates because that's very recent development in the manga. That, so you know, the, we the last know. The last movie had, I forget, I don't even remember the guy's name, but he was like on Gold Rogers' crew was like his story and he was an impel down and broke out or something. So it's true. The Rocks are probably too new for anything like that. So that's why I feel it's probably a setup for something coming later. They'll be like, oh, other incredibly notable pirate from the Captain, Rocks crew, it'll Person be, X. It'll be Captain John Shank's dad. <laughs> that would be uh, that. That'd be something. We don't know anything about where Shanks came from, so uh, could be could be anything. Maybe it's Buggy's dad, uh, Big Clown. <laughs> they're, 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 yeah, like uh, <laughs> his dad, Captain John has purple hair, right? And he right. Had two oh, sons, of course. Shanks and Buggy. Oh, of course. With two different women. That old scoundrel. One had a big old clown nose and big clown titties. And the other one had sick three-man scar across her eye. <laughs> uh, and it was totally dope. <laughs> the duality of man. Clown noses and sick scars. Uh, okay. That's it. That's the end of the chapter. Uh, expect more of the rocks. Uh, no, no doubt about it. Coming up, lads. But uh, that's it. Uh, apparently, probably be a chapter next week. So you know, keep your eyes peeled. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I. That's all I got. Anything, anything else of note for the chapter? I think we're good. No, I, I mean, aside from the fact that mm -hmm. uh, the Odin flashback is. Oh yeah. I mean, progress on that is is notable. It's, breakneck speed getting him to the point where we already knew he was so i assume if, a, if it continues from this mm -hmm. point it will be all about stuff we don't know Whitebeard, uh gold mm -hmm. roger mm -hmm. the minx and orochi which is going to be good yes we've we've covered incredible ground over the last three chapters in this flashback i think i said last time that i wanted three or four more chapters and i still feeling good still feeling perfect about that if we spent the night even less than that honestly if we spend like two more chapters or maybe three i don't know however much detail Odin wa oda wants to get into it about meeting the white beards meeting the gold roger pirates I don't know, learning maybe a little bit about the fucking Poneglyphs, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Odin doesn't look like the kind of guy who learned very much about his people's history growing up. But uh, 
you know, a, a, the outer package can be deceiving. So maybe he's a, a smart boy from his youth or something. I don't know. I don't know. But I guess that's it. I guess that's it. We yep. will uh, we'll check you out soon, lads. But uh, hey, why not go to patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates, link in the description, and donate us to help us keep doing the show and make money doing it. We'd be very appreciative. And you can do so and join the crew for as little as $1 in our patron discord. Be our crewmate. Be our, be our scallywag, our, our compatriot, our bosom buddy. And uh, the more you give, the more we respect you. Uh, and of course, regardless for free, you can join the discord. Link down below. And uh, talk with us about One Piece. Lots of lots of stuff going on there. Always active community. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you there if you want to. And that's yep. it. Patreon thing. Oh, and, of course, our new Twitter. At, uh, what is it? At Podcast Ahoy is our <laughs> Twitter. So if there's anything of relevance to tweet to us there, feel free to do so. We'll, we'll retweet the episodes there and uh, do all kinds of fun stuff. All right. That's it. See you next week, probably. Have a good time. Bye. Bye.